Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video, and welcome back to the Red Team series. Uh, in this video, we're going to be continuing from where we left off in the previous video. I do apologize for the delay in uploads, but uh, uh, this video, as well as the rest of the videos following this one, will be uploaded in a uh, regular schedule or as per the regular schedule. Uh, but with that being said, uh, what are we taking a look at in this video? Um, in this video, we're going to be exploring the various red team frameworks or methodologies uh, that are used as a sort of a guide, um, as a guideline or baseline uh, when performing uh, red team operations. And again, this is not exclusive to penetration testing, but uh, you get the idea. So we're going to be exploring, you know, the various frameworks or methodologies uh, that uh, are typically followed uh, in terms of uh, you know the process or the life cycle. So you know if you think of a um, you know if you think of penetration testing, uh, you have things like uh, you know the uh, penetration testing execution standard or PTES, uh, which again can work uh, in um, in relation to red teams. But we're going to be exploring it a little bit more, and the objective here is to further. Uh, understand or to further differentiate and distinguish, uh, you know, a pen test from a red team operation and the methodologies will lend uh, to that um, or will lend to the explanation. So, uh, you know, before we do anything or we get started, we need to understand red team engagements in terms of, you know, uh, what we're doing um, and uh, what the objectives or, uh, you know, what the goals and objectives are and how you know, uh, how we take that, how we go from a defined set of objectives with the rules of engagement uh, and how we actually implement that. So a successful red team engagement begins with clearly defining the goals or objectives of the engagement with a client. So very similar to a pen test, right? Um, after which, or once the objectives are agreed upon, the red team is then tasked with planning and orchestrating the engagement or operation based on the predefined goals or objectives. Uh, it's important to note that red team engagements uh, or a red team engagement does not focus on the search, you know, for vulnerabilities. And again, that may seem a little bit confusing, but uh, if you look at it holistically, whenever you're performing a red team operation, your primary goal is not, you know, find vulnerabilities and then exploit them. Uh, you know, you're targeting the organization as a whole in terms of its, uh, you know, uh, the way it operates, you know, uh, as well as, you know, the defensive uh, capabilities or the detection and uh, defense capabilities of the organization. So you're taking a much more holistic approach. Uh, what, what that also means, if I use an example, uh, is instead of focusing solely on systems or on, uh, you know, computers, let's say, or servers, you also start incorporating, you know, employees uh, and you're trying, uh, you know, going beyond the basic example of a phishing attack, you're trying to assess whether, you know, um, whether they are actually uh, adhering to, let's say, some predefined standards or security policies around uh, email security or, you know, downloading attachments. If there, if there is a security policy defined, you're also trying to assess the response time or the incident response uh, process, um, or at least the efficacy, uh, the efficacy of the process. What that means is, yeah, if the the organization you're performing the red team for or on has a blue team in place or a, a SOC, you know, security operations center, you're trying to see uh, how quickly or you know, firstly, if the SOC can detect an attack in time, and then secondly, uh, whether their response is proportionate or you know, they're able to. Um, to defend against the attack. Um, and the bottom line is that the results of the red team engagement or operation should highlight the blue team's ability to detect and defend against attacks. And more importantly, where improvements can be made, which is why red team operations are typically performed, you know, every quarter or ever, uh, you know, twice a year to not only assess the, um, you know, the organization's ability to, you know, detect and defend against attacks, but more so, uh, whether the blue team is actually improving or has improved from, you know, the previous operation with regards to, you know, uh, the mistakes uh, you identified or, uh, you know, areas that you you were able to clearly see that, you know, the blue team needs to improve on. Um, so 
uh, in addition to that, uh, as I explained in the previous video, red team engagements or operations uh, should also simulate or emulate new TTPs, and we'll get into TTPs. The TTPs are an abbreviation for tactics, techniques, and procedures, which is an abbreviation or a term or set of terms derived from the MITRE attack framework. So red team operations should also simulate or emulate new TTPs for the blue team to learn how to detect and defend against. So what this means is that, you know, the threat landscape is constantly evolving, regardless of whether you're an organization of, you know, medium size or you're a large organization. Uh, you know, new APT groups or new, new threat actors are constantly, again, using new TTPs. Uh, or you know they may uh, you may see some uh, advancements or some augmentations to their tradecraft, and you need to keep the blue team uh, on their toes, or you need to keep them you know up to date or aware of these new TTPs. And again, that lends to the the whole uh, cyclic process of improving their detection and uh, defensive capabilities. So. What all of this means, based on what I've just uh, said here and, you know, the objectives laid out and agreed on, what this means is that any successful red team engagement or operation will obviously require a structured methodological approach, especially when you talk about adversary emulation or simulation, which we'll actually be getting into. Um, and uh, it is therefore recommended, uh, you know, if you, and I, I know I'm going on a tangent here, but if you remember what I covered in the previous video, a lot of, uh, one of the misconceptions is that uh, red team engagements or operations are very ad hoc, which means, you know, they, there's no structure or methodology behind it, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, what, uh, what usually leads people into thinking that it's quite random, ad hoc and chaotic is the large scope or the very wide scope that you typically see red team operations have. Um, what this means, uh, or what I'm trying to say here, is that every red team operation requires an appropriate framework or methodology that you follow in terms of, you know, the methodological approach to stuff, but also ensuring that uh, you are uh, staying within the bounds, not just of the rules or not just uh, the ones defined in the rules of engagement, but uh, you know, using something that has worked previously, uh, so that you know you, there's a sense of accountability. Um, and this is very useful, not just in during the execution phase of the red team operation or campaign, but also in structuring it beforehand. So some frequent uh, or frequently utilized red team frameworks or methodologies include the cyber kill chain by Lockheed Martin, and of course, the MITRE attack framework. Now, the MITRE attack framework, I know, is not really a methodology that you can follow, but it's really a framework that, um, you know, we'll actually be getting into in a separate video but is a framework that's been adopted by both the offensive side and the defensive side in cybersecurity and uh, at you know at the most basic level offers a common speak or a common language between these two uh, cybersecurity professionals or between these two groups and allows them to communicate things like um, you know specific vulnerabilities or specific uh, procedures and again if you're a little bit confused don't worry it'll make sense so, you know, we have the cyber kill chain by Lockheed Martin and we have the MITRE attack framework, which is a framework. And then we have the unified uh, cyber kill chain, uh, which uh, is more so like a methodology or a process. And um, you can see that the cyber kill chain here uh, breaks down a red team operation. Again, this can work for pen testing, but it breaks it down into various phases So stage one or stages, I should say. Stage one is all to do with reconnaissance. Uh, some examples here are, you know, harvesting email addresses, conference information, just ba very basic examples. And then you have stage two, which is where you now, uh, you're performing weaponization, or this is the stage of weaponization where you're coupling exploits uh, with backdoors um, into a deliverable payload. Uh, another, a better example is, you know, developing your, uh, let's say word, uh, your malicious word attachments or word documents, sorry. Uh, that you'll use for initial access, any payloads or uh, any code that you're going to be using for initial access, or even later, uh, you know, during post-exploitation. And then you have stage three, this is delivery. So this is where you now deliver the weaponized bundle or payload to the victim via email, web, USB. So that's where, you know, if you're performing uh, phishing or you're using a spear phishing attachment, this is uh, this stage is all to do with, you know, uh, setting up, let's say your phishing framework, 
uh, or your phishing infrastructure in terms of domains, emails, the phishing um, framework that you'll be using. So something like GoFish, uh, and that encapsulates the whole process of now sending an email to your target. Uh, and then of course you have exploitation, uh, which again can, can include, um, can involve the successful execution of your payload uh, or your weaponized bundle as it were uh, by the target on, their t on a target system. And then exploitation sort of infers that, you know, gaining access to a system by means of either exploiting, let's say an employee or a human being through social engineering or by exploiting a vulnerability in uh, one of, you know, in, in a particular target system. So the objective here is, uh, you typically see this with APT groups, the uh, malicious document uh, or file that let's say someone um, in the target organization downloads and opens or executes on this system usually doesn't have anything malicious on it uh, from, you know, uh, if you were to look at it objectively. Uh, what that document, if I use the example of a malicious document, what it does is act as a dropper. So it actually calls back uh, to a command and control server and then, you know, um, essentially downloads the stage. Um, so it, it, if you think of it from your traditional Metasploit uh, framework payload perspective, uh, the document acts as a stage, uh, as a stager, and then, you know, it downloads the stage uh, only after the stager has been executed. So once the document is open, it, it calls back, downloads the stage, which then uh, either, you know, I wouldn't say gives the attacker reverse shell or gives the red team operator reverse shell, but more importantly, or more uh, commonly, you know, um, calls back to a command and control server and then, you know, further actions are taken, which is why you now see, um, uh, this is where you now see your, you know, command and control. So command and control channel is established uh, and, uh, you know, I've sort of skipped over installation of malware, but that's where you have stuff like rootkits, etc. And then you have, you know, your actions on objectives. So this is now where the attacker, and again, I'm looking at this from an adversarial perspective. This is when the, the attacker either performs additional reconnaissance, uh, you know, performs all the standard post exploitation stuff and then, uh, or post exploitation activities. And then, you know, action on objective essentially infers what were, you know, uh, the attackers doing uh, or performing actions that are in line with their original objective. So what was the objective of the threat group or APT group, uh, or why did they want to exploit or gain access to the, this organization? So you typically have, um, you know, actions on objectives, like, uh, some examples of actions on, on objectives are, you know, deploying ransomware, deleting data, exfiltrating data, so on and so forth. But as a red teamer, you're not really going to be doing any of that. That's typically where you stop or you draw the line there. So you don't want to delete anything on an organization's, uh, you know, within an organization's digital infrastructure. You then have the MITRE attack framework, and I've just, uh, you know, clipped a screenshot from the attack framework website. And uh, don't worry, I'll be explaining this in uh, the next video after this. We'll actually be going through it in quite a bit of detail. But the attack framework essentially breaks down uh, each phase of an adversary's life cycle or the adversary's kill chain uh, into tactics and each tactic contains techniques. So you can see that at the top here, these are all your tactics. So you have initial access, execution, persistence, privilege escalation, defense evasion, credential access, so on and so forth, all the way to impact. So impact is the equivalent of uh, actions on objectives in the uh, cyber kill chain. Uh, by, you know, Lockheed Martin, just so that we're on the same page. And then you can see under initial access, it references the various techniques that are typically used by adversaries to gain initial access, right? And I've clipped off, um, you know, the pre-engagement phase here, but uh, that'll actually make sense in the next video. You can see the various ways that attackers typically gain access or initial access onto a system. So you have spear phishing attachments, exploiting a public facing application, targeting external remote services, uh, spear phishing links, uh, spear phishing via service, trusted relationships, valid accounts, so on and so forth. Now, if you compare the two, and again, I know that the attack framework or the MITRE attack framework is a framework, as the name suggests, and the cyber kill chain is exactly that sort of a, a cyber kill chain 
uh, you can see that the MITRE ATT&CK framework is quite popular as the most uh, widely adopted framework by, again, not just uh, red teamers, but, you know, pen testers and also uh, the blue team. Uh, and again, this will make sense as we progress. But you can see the, the reason the MITRE ATT&CK framework is much better is because it's much more comprehensive in um, with regards to uh, being uh, being more detailed or sort of capturing or encapsulating a lot of the phases that, for example, the cyber kill chain doesn't encapsulate or doesn't cover, you know, stuff like resource development or execution, uh, privilege escalation. Uh, and, you know, one of the differences is that the attack framework actually uh, outlines a lot of the post-exploitation activity that's quite important, um, you know, regardless of whether you're a red team or if you analyze any, um, you know, the tradecraft or the... Uh, the attack cycle or the, the attack uh, kill chain um, of an APT group, you'll typically see that a lot of their stuff or a lot of the key activity is, uh, you know, post exploitation or is uh, what you typically consider as activities performed after initial access. So, you know, defense evasion, uh, credential access, discovery, lateral movement, collection, command and control, and then exfiltration and then impact, right? So, Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, now that we've uh, gotten this, uh, you know, we're aware of, we've gotten the introduction into the various red team frameworks and methodologies at a high level. In the next uh, set of videos, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the MITRE ATT&CK framework, or at least getting a practical view, uh, you know, practical understanding, or getting some practical experience with the framework. Um, and uh, then we'll also be exploring the MITRE ATT&CK navigator as a tool for planning uh, red team operations, but I'll also show you how it can be used uh, for reporting um, as a way to communicate, um, you know, the results of a red team operation to the blue team so that they can actually start making the improvements. Uh, with that being said, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below. If you have any feedback or questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Furthermore, uh, if you check the description section and the comment under this video, you'll see uh, that'll link you to a page on the Hackersploit forum where this, um, whatever has been contained within the slides has been uh, added or can be accessed in the form of a, a post on the forum. And I've also provided you with access to the slides in PDF format uh, on the forum. So just, uh, just check the description section of this video and other videos within this series, or just check the first comment that's pinned to this video and you should see a link to that post. Uh, the forum is accessible on forum.hackersploit.org if you want to visit it. And I'll be using the forum as a means of engaging with you guys. So if you actually have any uh, suggestions, video suggestions, any questions, uh, the forum is a great place to actually uh, quantify or to give uh, you know some additional uh, credence to your questions. You know, the, the comments can be a bit difficult to keep track of, uh, but Anyway, with that being said, that's going to be it for this video and I'll be seeing you in the next video.